Today's video is how to set up AS3X and SAFE on your NX transmitter. So let's get started. First thing that needs to be completed is binding your transmitter and receiver together, which we've already done. Next, we need to push enter and scroll down to forward programming. Now, a side note you need to remember is the receiver needs to be powered up before you can access it with forward programming. So you can't just connect to the receiver without a supplied power. Also, you need to have your throttle cut on when you go to forward programming. I'm going to go ahead and go into forward programming without it on so you can see the warning screen that pops up. Warning, throttle cut off. So we'll click throttle, throttle cut. cut. Now it's connecting and we're at the main menu. We'll go to gyro settings. First time setup. It says make sure the model has been configured including wing type, reversion, travel, trim, etc. before continuing setup. We'll go to the next screen and we'll get another message as well. Any wing type channel assignment, sub trim, or reversing changes require running through initial setup again. So something I would keep in mind is this would be the very last setup I would do on an airplane. Go through and completely set up your airplane and then do the AS3X last. Set the model level and press continue so you notice we got continue or set orientation manually. For this tutorial, we're going to pretend that the antenna leads is the nose of the plane and the servo leads connections are the tail of the plane. So we've got nose of the airplane, tail of the airplane. So we're going to push continue because we got a level. Now we're going to point the antenna leads down, which would be nose down. Push continue. And we've got orientation one. You can go down here and change it if it's not right. However, it's pretty simple how it's set up. Just follow the picture there and make sure that matches how you've got it installed in the airplane. Push continue. First thing we want to do is gain channel select. From the factory, channel eight auxiliary three is set up on the R knob. So what I like to do is set it up on channel eight, and that's kind of like the default gain control for spectrum. So we're going to go to gain channel, scroll down to R knob, auxiliary three. If that's not selected, what you do is just push enter. Like let's say you've inhibited the channel eight auxiliary three like I've done the other ones. Then you would just go in here and it would be on inhibit and you would just change it to the one you want. Which you can either set it on the screen or you can just scroll the knob at the top. Now we're going to go bottom right hand corner to next and then we click apply. You'll see the receiver power down, then it power back up. Receiver is rebooting, click from menu. Once it says that, you can just push the click button. Now we'll go back into forward programming. We'll go back to gyro settings and we're going to F mode setup. Now this is a flight mode setup so we can assign the switch how we want to as far as AS3X working. Now, first thing we want to do is scroll down to FM channel and we want to assign the channel similar to how we did a gain channel. So we'll go up here and click on inhibit FM channel and I'm going to put it on channel seven. Now you want to be careful when you do that. If you have a plane that has reverse thrust, that is also set up by default on channel 7. So if you had a reverse thrust plane and you just activated channel 7, that's going to be on this same switch. So be careful that you don't put AS3X and SAFE on the same channel as reverse thrust. So we're going to push enter and then I'm going to put mine on switch C. So I'll just toggle the switch. Push enter, go to next. Now it says flight mode three. As we push the switch up, it'll go to flight mode two and flight mode one on the screen. Okay. The way we're going to set this up is having no AS3X on flight mode three, which is positioned all the way down. So we're going to go here to AS3X and it's active right now. We're going to change it to inhibit. We're going to go to flight mode two, leave that on AS3X. And flight mode one on AS3X. Okay, now we're going to go back and we can go into AS3X settings. 
you've got AS3X gains. And you will notice on flight mode three, we don't have any gains on the screen because we turned it off. Now, when we go to flight mode two, we'll have the standard values of 60, 50, and 40. You can go in here and adjust those up or down if you want to start with. And then we'll have the same values for flight mode one. Now, if you wanted to, you could set this up AS3X off, AS3X maybe medium or normal, whatever you want to call it, and then AS3X on high. And you could put two different values. Like, let's say if I wanted default for the highest value, but I went in the middle and I wanted it to be half that, I would go to 20, 25, 30. So now we'll go to flight mode one, which is at the top, and we'll see the 60, 50, and 40 again. Okay, now we're going to back up. You've got your priority tab next. Stick priority means how much AS3X you want at full stick. 160 is going to turn it completely off. Anything under 100 starts to add AS3X. So to make it simple, if we wanted 25% AS3X at full stick, you would go to 75%. If you wanted 20% of AS3X at full stick, you would go to 80%. So it works off 100% values. We'll go down here to 90. That would be 10%. And you notice you have the three axes. You can adjust it however you want on roll, pitch, or yaw. I just want to show you all that real quick. That way you know what stick priority does and how the values work with how much AS3X you want applied. You have your heading settings. So it says use caution for y'all gain. So you can adjust the heading gains that you want as well on that screen. Next is gain sensitivity. You have one, two, four, and then you can inhibit. Gain sensitivity is how much it multiplies the gain. Just to give you a small example, if you had it on 25%, that would basically be 25. If you went to two times, that'd basically be 50. So you probably think, well, BD, why would I want to use that? Well, you may be using it on a plane where the AS3X, even at a high percentage, is not strong enough. This allows you to amplify the sensitivity of the AS3X. Now you've got fixed and adjustable gains. Now, right now, you will notice they all three say adjustable, roll, pitch, and yaw for flight mode one, flight mode two, and then we go to flight mode three, they turn off. So, we're going to go back. You can change those to adjustable if you want. Now, here's where you set up the gains in the air using the R knob. We fly around, and we turn the gain up, and the plane starts to oscillate, so we turn it down, and we get to where we want it. And I'm going to turn it down a little bit lower here. You go down to capture gyro gains, and there's your values that you have set. Now, they're fairly low on here because we reduced the numbers down. So it's 5, 6, and 7%. I'm going to turn this knob all the way to the right to show you all something with the gains. You notice it says 20, 25, and 30, and I'm all the way to the right. When you turn the dial all the way to the right, that is 100% of your preset values. For example, remember how we did on the previous screen 60, 50, and 40 for high? Watch when I flip it to the high setting. Now, all the way to the right is 100% still, but our values are 60, 50, and 40 because that's what we set. So this is a percentage of those max values. That's the easiest way to remember it. Whatever you set your AS3 gains, this all the way to the right is the highest it's going to go. If we went in that screen and put 100 across the board, then this would be 100% gains when we have it all the way to the right. So we're going to go in here and I'm going to actually lower these down and I'm going to show you what it does. 13, 17, and 20 is the values in there. Click capture gyro gains. Now those gains are on flight mode one. So you don't have to manually transfer over the gains that you found to work in the air while you were adjusting it according to how the plane was responding to the gains. So now it's 13, 17, 20. So we're going to go in the middle on this next screen. We're going to go back. 
Go to capture gyro gains again. Now we're on flight mode two. And let's say we want to turn those up. Go to capture gyro gains. Now those are saved on flight mode two. Next thing I want to do is go back and show you one additional feature. Remember how we had fixed and adjustable gains? Now, you're probably thinking, well, BD, I've already set my gains. I don't want them to change. Well, that's good because Spectrum, what they've done is on the fixed and adjustable gain, when you click on it again, once you've captured your gyro gains, now they all become fixed. So if you're wanting to adjust this again after you capture your gyro gains, be careful, you might just sit there and be trying to adjust the gains on the knob and nothing's happening. And it's because when you do that capture gyro gain, it changes them to fixed. So just something to keep in mind, if you want to adjust them again, you need to go in here and change them back to adjustable. Now we're going to back up and we're going to go into first time safe setup. Before setting up a safe, a flight mode channel must be configured. Now, if you want to do this before you go into all of the AS3X settings, you can go here and click on flight mode channel. However, we've already done that previously, so we just go to continue. Flight mode 1, select the desired flight mode switch position to adjust settings for each flight mode. AS3X gains must be tuned and active in safe flight modes to help reduce wobble. It says level model capture attitude. So right now it's set on zero and zero. The receiver wants to know what level is on the airplane. Now at the bottom it says positive is nose up or roll right. Negative is nose down and roll left. So what I'm going to do is just something simple. I'm going to raise the nose up on the receiver, which would be the nose of the plane, and that'll give us a positive number. Level model and capture attitude. I'm going to push this and you're going to see the value change on it. And I'm actually going to move it a little bit to the right. Now, side note, don't mount your receiver this way. I'm just showing you how it corrects the values in the receiver to know that the plane is level at this attitude. However, as I mentioned, when you mount in a plane, it should never be mounted up like this. It should be flat like that or on the side of the fuselage like that. Or mounted underneath the plane like this. It should never be mounted in a weird position. But let's say your plane has a positive angle of attitude and the nose sticks up straight. Then you would click level model and capture attitude and it's going to give us a positive value on the pitch. If it was tilted sideways it would show roll and pitch. So just to make that simple Let's say our airplane has a nose up pitch attitude. We're just going to hold the receiver up. We're going to click level model and capture attitude. You will notice that it says pitch 32. And then the minus one on the roll, I was just trying to hold it as straight as I could. So now we're going to, so now it knows that that's level on the receiver. So we want to set this up on flight mode one, which is at the very top. So we just go down. And we want to change this to self level. And we want to go to the next one. And this is going to be your bank. So, right there, we've got self mode, which is self level and angled uh, limits. So, basically, the angled limits is going to keep it where it can only go so far. And the self level is going to make it level when you let off the sticks. You will notice it says roll right, roll left, pitch or pitch down. The higher this number is, the more the plane will bank. However, with self-level and the angle limits, it won't let the plane fully roll over. So, for example, 60 and 60, when you hold the stick full direction to the right or left, it's going to bank it at a 60 setting on the bank angle. Same for pitch up and down. Pitch down, it'll let you go to 40. Pitch up, it'll let you go to 50. If you raise these numbers up, for example, roll right and left, if you put them on 90, you hold the stick, far right or far left, it's going to allow the plane to bank more, 
but it's not going to let the plane roll over still. However, 90 is basically a 90 degree bank. I mean, it lets the plane go almost all the way banked before it stops. So you want to tune those to how you perform the plane and adjust them accordingly. So now we're going to go to apply. It says please stand by. It's rebooting the receiver, which will tell us on the screen, and we click for the menu again. Now we're going to go back into forward programming. And at this point, you've set up AS3X and save. So the last thing we want to do is just go over the other settings. You've got fail safe. It says capture fail safe positions or go into fail safe. The fail safe setup in here is so you can set it up if you wanted to go to a predetermined value or the last position that you're holding. For example, throttle is preset to negative 130. So if you lost connectivity from the radio to the receiver, which if you notice when you go into system setup, it says you're about to turn off the RF. It makes the plane go to no throttle. Also, if you lost connectivity, you don't want the plane going full blast because you don't have control on where it can go. Another thing you can change it to is hold last. That means it will hold the last position that you set it. If you had your throttle at 50% and your elevator at 25%, then that means it's going to hold those positions. Now you have to set that for each individual one as you see up here on the outputs. So it's not one setting for all. You can set each one individually. Capture failsafe positions allows you to put the sticks where you want them to and click apply and it's going to hold the sticks in those positions if you lose connectivity with the transmitter and the receiver. So now we'll go back. Initiate receiver bind mode is just another way to put the receiver into bind mode. Factory reset puts it back to the factory setup. So if this was a receiver that you just purchased and not a TA which comes in an airplane, then you can go to factory reset and it's just going to clean the receiver out and so you can do the first time setup again. Another good reason to use a factory reset is if you went through the first time setup and you think you did something wrong, just come in here and do a factory reset. You also have save to backup. So if you put a file in there and you, and you save to backup, that allows the settings that you put in there to be able to be your backup settings. So when you go to restore to backup, they are restore from backup. That means that you can use those settings that you have came up with for default values. I personally just leave it on factory reset. That way, if I want to go back and do anything, I'm just starting over with a fresh receiver. So now we went through all the AS3X and safe setup. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new today, go ahead and push like. If you want to see future videos, subscribe to the channel while you're here. I appreciate y'all watching and I'll see you on the next one.